Well, hi. Hello from Luxembourg. Hello, Luxembourg. Hello. Welcome, everybody. I did happen to receive a uh, a box in the mail, yes. Luckily, I went to go pick it up today. Yeah, there were a couple of boxes in the mail today. Somebody was kind enough to send me a bunch of books that uh, that they were getting rid of. <laughs> First time being on my live. Hello. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Hello. <clears throat> good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. What is it that uh, Truman says from... This is the Jim Carrey character from Truman Show. Well, if, good morning. And if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, um, oh my goodness. Good morning from Malaysia. Hello, Malaysia. Pete is the real MVP. That is correct. No, you haven't missed anything. We're just getting started. Uh, for those of you who this is your first time, um, I am, yeah, I do. Just, we just hang out for a little while. We'll read some stories, some poems, whatever else comes up. We'll talk about uh, whatever strikes people's fancy. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, I'll read some requests from the community. We'll just have a nice time. Have I thought of any more music mashups? That was a really, it really actually was a dream that I had that mashed up those two songs and it kind of went perfectly. And I, I don't know, my brain was just like, ah, this would work. 
And then I did it, and it worked really well. Um, no, I have not had a dream since then that has put two songs together quite in that same way. But... I don't even remember the name of the Russian song that that is. I I, I don't th think I can even release the the mashup anymore because because the Russian song is kind of it's like you know it's from a trend that was like that's now like two years old I think <laughs> it's like it's like ancient history at this point. So we'll start off with a little poem by Michael Faudet, uh, request by Phantom's Rogue. And it's called Spring. She wore the scent of early spring on her delicate neck. And every kiss I stole tasted of bright yellow flowers and buzzing bees. Mm. Now, now. <laughs> well, um, so every once in a while, people send me a package, and it's a little bit like playing Russian roulette uh, to open one of these on a live, because I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, it has been promised that it is live safe. So we'll just see. Mike's a little crackly, huh? Okay, hold on. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Let's see. Testing one, two. Hello. Is that better? All right. The first thing that's in this package. A rubber duck. Clearly, I do not have enough ducks to give. Thank you. <laughs> I'll put it next to uh, next to my knit ducks. My my dead dead knit ducks. <laughs> oh, there are a few more. <laughs> So we have blue sunglasses duck, Halloween, jack-o'-lantern duck, and uh, Christmas tree duck. This is like a, this is like a Beltane gift, I think. Fresh out of ducks. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely cannot, cannot get enough ducks around here. The bull, the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. 
an animated story. Very sweet. Thank you very much. This is from uh, Jackie Sky Eagle. Thank you, Jackie. I appreciate it. This is very sweet. I I still I have not read the uh, the boy the what is it the boy the mole the fox and the horse but I will I will definitely look at it. There's one more thing in the box. Oh. Cerberus and a card. Congrats on 1 million on Quinn. Some of these gifts I meant to send last year, but like everyone, life distracted more. The book I've sent has done a good deal of healing for me, and I wanted to share it with you and the Islanders. Maybe in the future you will have the time to read it to us. Hopefully you will feel better by then. With all my love, Jackie Sky Eagle. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you for Cerberus. <laughs> Put it down there. Thank you very much. That was very sweet. Well, how is everyone? Um, I had an interesting week of uh, getting hit by a new round of something. Don't know what it was this time, but all I know is there was something. Um, I do feel better, though. Do I have a pet? Uh, I do live with a lovely cat. This, this, this poor cat is acting like it is always starving, always hungry, just never fed enough. A studio tour or a day in the life video. Um, Probably. Yeah. I mean, you know, my, my life of recording is, is not a very visually stunning process. Um, I did post a video. Was it on YouTube? I don't know. I posted a video at one point of me, uh, getting set up for and starting to do an audio. Um, the full video is available on my Patreon. Odd, oddly enough, if you go through my profile. Um, and you know, and then the recording of the final product is available there too. Tigress Katie requests a poem by Nikita Gill called Fire. Remember what you must do when they undervalue you. When they think your softness is your weakness. When they treat your kindness like it is their advantage. You awaken every dragon Every wolf, every monster that sleeps inside of you. And you remind them what hell looks like when it wears the skin of a gentle human. Fire by Nikita Gill.
Uh, I made a mistake last week and I accidentally skipped a reading, a poem. So I'm going to jump to a request by Steph Rennie called Helen Keller by Langston Hughes. Helen Keller by Langston Hughes. She, in the dark, found light brighter than many ever see. She, within herself, found loveliness through the soul's own mastery. And now the world receives from her dower the message of the strength of inner power. I was talking today uh, with somebody about um, the current cultural obsession with the self, which I don't know. I mean, I don't know that obsession with the self, it, it just depends on where it's coming from, right? I don't know if it's necessarily a um, as big of a problem. Um, like ego, sure, certainly. Uh, the egoic self, of course. But focusing on the self in a collective sense, the collective self, focusing on us as a piece of the whole, I feel like is a very important project. I wish they still, still sent phone books. Uh, I, I don't get phone books anymore. It used to be, I don't know, I'd get phone books that big every every other, what is it, like every six months they would send them out? What does my cup say? My cup says, words are hard, but the tea is good. Words are hard. I don't know if you knew that, but it's very difficult to say words sometimes. <clears throat> Marissa asks for a poem by Andrea Gibson called Instead of Depression. Try calling it hibernation. Imagine the darkness is a cave in which you will be nurtured by doing absolutely nothing. Hibernating animals don't even dream. It's okay if you can't imagine spring. Sleep through the alarm of the world. Name your hopelessness a quiet hollow, a place you go to heal, a den you dug, sweetheart, instead of a grave. Instead of Depression by Andrea Gibson. Mandy requests a poem by E.H. that goes like this. 
You are not your age, nor the size of clothes you wear. You are not a weight or the color of your hair. You are not your name or the dimples in your cheeks. You are all the books you read and all the words you speak. You are your croaky morning voice and the smiles you try to hide. You're the sweetness in your laughter and every tear you've cried. You're the songs you sing so loudly when you know you're all alone. You're the places that you've been to and the one that you call home. You're the things that you believe in and the people that you love. You're the photos in your bedroom and the future you dream of. You're made of so much beauty, but it seems that you forgot when you decided that you were defined by all the things you're not. I sound a lot better than last week. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I definitely, I don't know. Last week I had no idea what was in store for me. Um, I, I hit a new, I, I came down with a new thing that I got hit with on Thursday and was in recovery for most of the weekend. And now I'm, now I'm on the up again. Thankfully. Brina requests a poem called Return to Sender by Your Midnight Poet. Written by Marina, a.k.a. Your Midnight Poet. <laughs> to the giver, I hope you receive this message well. And as a giver myself, I guess this message is for me as well. Givers feel a pain that no other will truly understand. A pain that we cover up with seemingly beautiful, bright, cheerful flowers, placing them delicately on a shelf, displayed with all the rest of the hidden pain from the times we held on to hope. For that one day, we would experience what receiving was like. But that day never came. That person never arrived. But maybe, just... Maybe we are that person. Maybe we, the giver, need to stop giving and pause on what we were, what you were about to give and return to sender. Give you what you gave to others because there is no greater gift than giving to yourself. So it's okay to feed your own soul and live. To the receiver, don't ever take a giver for granted, because one day that giver won't show up, and you will have to do it all on your own, my friend. And that is when you will then understand what true pain is. What you did to the giver. That was Return to Sender by Marina, a.k.a. Your Midnight Poet. Ah. 
highlight of the week. Um, I'd say my highlight of the week is, um, I think it's okay for me to say that I, I will be, an agreement has been struck that I will be on Quinn for, for the foreseeable future. Um, there has, uh, so yeah, I have been sort of ramping up a relationship with them over time and, uh, I've now reached an agreement where my content will be available on their platform for many, many years into the, into the future, which is great. And I'm excited for that. I do love my Quinn listeners. Lenore asks for a poem by E. E. Cummings. I like my body when it is with your. I like my body when it is with your body. It is so quite new a thing. Muscles better and nerves more. I like your body. I like what it does. Like it. I like its hows. I like to feel the spine of your body and its bones and the trembling firm smoothness in which I will again and again and again. I like the kissing this and that of you. I like slowly stroking the shocking fuzz of your electric fur. And what is it comes over parting flesh? And eyes, big love crumb. And possibly, I like the thrill of under me you, so quite new. I like my body when it is with your E.E. E. Cummings. I'll uh, <clears throat> I'll tell a dad joke that uh, somebody recently told to me. <clears throat> what comes out of your nose when you're in Casablanca? Humphrey Boogert. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. You know, I mean, going from E. Cummings to, uh, to that, I, that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, gosh, I don't know. There were a lot of good ones that I got last week. How do you drown a hipster in the mainstream? Uh, it's... <laughs> It's terrible. Terrible. How did the uh, portrait get nabbed by the by the fuzz? It was framed. God. I don't I I don't have a good knock knock joke. Uh-uh. <laughs> I really am only here to distract people from work. That's That's all I'm that's all my purpose in life is. I just make audios to uh to occupy people's minds at work. <laughs> Becca requests a poem by Alex Klingenberg called Boundary. Boundaries mean saying no to things you want to do, too. Not every opportunity is yours within this moment. Release and then release some more until your plate has space for you. Boundaries by Alex Klingenberg Watermelon Dreams requests a poem by Tina Rizik. True love carried to the afterworld. Ooh, the afterworld. I like that. My love, nothing lasts. The train of life runs fast from cradle to the last breath. Yesterday born, laid on breast. Tomorrow born, laid to rest. Yet love stands out, for souls can't live without, for souls dwell in the absolute, where prevail calm and beatitude. We've known each other for so long, O oh, my soulmate, my heart and soul to you belong. Before the lands and the seas there was just you, and me. Yet time and space make no difference. Our love as the soul lives in permanence. While nothing lasts in this world, souls carry true love 
to the afterworld. True Love Carried to the Afterworld by Tina Rizek I'm trying to take more uh, more voice lessons. I was never, when I got into this work, I was never a classically trained anything. I didn't take, I didn't take um, singing lessons or, I mean, I took a little bit of VO, uh, learning how to do conversational VO in my early 20s. But that was about it. Um, so a lot of this has just been trial and error. Uh, I feel like if you listen to my earliest audio work, it's a little more, I don't know, canned. <laughs> but um, I don't know. We, we all go through different evolutions of it, right? What did I do before? I was in technology. I was a project manager. I was a very unhappy project manager. I, I wanted to be an artist. And, and, but like, you know, being in, being a starving artist didn't really feel like something I wanted to do with my life. Um, I just happened to find a niche that I think where I could explore my art and, uh, and also support myself at the same time, which works really well. Eleanor requests a poem by Warson Shire. He bathes me until I forget their names and faces. I ask him to look me in the eye when I come home. Why do you deny yourself heaven? Why do you consider yourself undeserving? Why are you afraid of love? You think it's not possible for someone like you, but you are the love of my life. You are the love of my life. You are the love of my life. A poem by Warson Shire. Thank you for the subscribe, whoever just uh, subscri subscribed to my Patreon. That was very kind. <laughs> Amanda Joyous requests a poem by Mary Oliver called Peonies. <clears throat> this morning the green fists of the peonies are getting ready to break my heart. As the sun rises, as the sun strokes them with his old buttery fingers. And they open pools of lace, white and pink. And all day the black ants climb over them, boring their deep and mysterious holes into the curls, craving the sweet sap, taking it away to their dark underground cities. And all day under the shifty wind, as in a dance to the great wedding, 
The flowers bend their bright bodies and tip their fragrance to the air and rise, their red stems holding all that dampness and recklessness gladly and lightly, and there it is again. Beauty the brave, the exemplary, blazing open. Do you love this world? Do you cherish your humble and silky life? Do you adore the green grass with its terror beneath? Do you also hurry half-dressed and barefoot into the garden and softly, and exclaiming of their dearness, fill your arms with the white and pink flowers? with their honeyed heaviness, their lush trembling, their eagerness to be wild and perfect for a moment, before they are nothing forever. Peonies by Mary Oliver I, I heard someone recently uh, on a podcast talk about how flowers are really just um, just flowers are really just plants waving their sexual organs all over the place um, for, for us to enjoy. So, you know, take that for what it will, what you will. Yes, exactly. Uh, f- flowers are just, you know, they're just the nudists of the garden. That's all they are. Chris requests a poem by Izumi Shikibu from the Ink Dark Moon. And it goes, it's called To a Man Who Said We Should Meet Even If It Were Only for a Single Time. Even if I now saw you only once, I would long for you through worlds. Worlds. Even if I now saw you only once, I would long for you through worlds, worlds. I feel like there's something that I'm becoming more and more aware of as I'm getting older that, you know, I mean, there's so many things that I was willing to do when I was younger that felt like a sacrifice of my happiness in order to either impress somebody or to be with somebody or to, you know, to mold myself into a society to fitting in in a society that um, felt oppressive and um, challenging 
And the older I'm getting, the more I realize how much bullshit all of that is. <laughs> and how happiness really is kind of the only company, the only compass anybody needs. I mean, just choose happiness. If something doesn't make you happy, don't choose it. Go some, go a different direction. <laughs> Ivory Lou requests a poem by an author unknown. <clears throat> On the difficult days, I hope you remind yourself that it's normal to not know what you need to do to feel better. It's normal for everything to overwhelm you. It's normal for, to want to cry at the thought of everything, everything that's happened everything that needs to be done, everything that you don't want to deal with because the journey feels like too much to handle. The journey is too much to handle sometimes. But most times, we can handle more than we tell ourselves we can. You know what? I, I mean, I do feel relatively well for the most part. It's just, you know, it's residual stuff that I'm clearing out of the system. You know, I, uh, uh, I wish I could do more filtering through the TikTok app, uh, like audio filtering. Cause I would love to play with some more audio effects in this setting, but I don't know. I don't think the, the TikTok app really is, uh, it's not allowing me to do that. Do I read much poetry outside of the lives? Um, well, I mean, I read so much poetry just based on the community that I've built through my Patreon that, uh, I mean, no, I, I wouldn't say that I read a lot of poetry independently, but, um, I'm getting a lot of it on a weekly basis. So that's, it's just, it's filling my, my cup gloriously. No, you know, for me, there's, um, sometimes I want to be able to play with sound effects and, um, echo effects and that sort of thing. I've done this before on YouTube. In fact, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, you can go and find, um, I believe there's a video where I improvise a little meditation where I start putting sound effects and sort of different things in and play around. Um, and, uh, yeah, I haven't done that in a while, but, but it's, it's a lot of fun when I do it.
Let me see. Oh, I do have another request that I missed. Hold on. How about a Pablo Neruda? It's called If You Forget Me. I want you to know one thing. You know how this is. If I look at the crystal moon, at the red branch of the slow autumn at my window, if I touch near the fire the impalpable ash or the wrinkled body of the log, everything carries me to you. As if everything that exists, aromas, light, metals, were little boats that sail toward those isles of yours that wait for me. Well, now, if little by little you stop loving me, I shall stop loving you, little by little. If suddenly you forget me, do not look for me, for I shall already have forgotten you. If you think it long and mad, the wind of banners that passes through my life, and you decide to leave me at the shore of the heart where I have roots, remember that on that day at that hour I shall shift my arms and my roots will set off to seek another land. But if each day, each hour, you feel that you are destined for me with implacable sweetness, if each day a flower climbs up to your lips to seek me, ah, my love, ah, my own, in me all that fire is repeated, in me nothing is extinguished or forgotten, my love feeds on your love, beloved. And as long as you live it, as long as you live, it will be in your arms without leaving mine. If You Forget Me by Pablo Neruda The Maestro of Love Himself <clears throat> Darling, please. Poetry isn't the only thing I do on lives. But it's a large part of what I do. I think because poetry, in a way, captures emotion and nuance in a way that uh, just hanging out and talking doesn't necessarily do all the time. Let's see. <laughs> uh, a little request, uh, Christina Singh, called Love Game. The memory of your kiss, strawberries, granite moon, we clash will over another non-issue. Deadwood, your reluctance to hold my hand. Solo dinner, 
quiet Monday at the diner. Old love, the rush I feel seeing you, still new. You like the Hades stories. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. The uh, the Hades series was um it was a big edge for me when I did that one. Uh it was a fun project around sound effects. Writing it took a while, but um I don't know. People have asked me if there's more for that story and I believe there is. I haven't quite found what it is yet, but I will. There's something there. There's a really great book called Existential K-I-N-K. Where in the, int in the intro of this book, uh, the woman argues that, you know, the legend of Hades and Persephone is sort of, um, oh, mishandled <laughs> through, through ancient legend. That really, you know, in a way, um, Hades is simply an expression of Persephone. And how Hades is really just an expression of something that Persephone's soul wanted to experience. And so it created something called Hades. And then Hades put her through the experiences that she went through. Um... It's a really kind of a fascinating book. Highly recommended. Is there a category on Quinn I would want to try that I've never done? Um, I can't say. I mean, I've got well over 70 audios on Quinn at this point. Um... And I feel like I'm hard, I would be hard pressed to find something that I really haven't done, done quite yet. Um, but I don't know, maybe. The name of the book that I was just talking about is called Existential K-I-N-K. It basically argues that there's nothing that we are experiencing as, as people that our souls don't want in some way. There's nothing that we are experiencing that our souls don't want. So we may as well get with the program and enjoy whatever it is that we're experiencing. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. <laughs> Oh no, somebody's putting off being with their students to listen to me. Ooh, naughty, naughty. Okay, yes, I could do more M-sub content. That is true. 
Maybe I will explore, explore that a little more. That is a little bit more of a vulnerable edge for me these days. So maybe, maybe we'll play with that. I'm not currently taking original work typically. Um, mainly because, uh, I, I would like to maintain a relatively fair playing field for everybody. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not above taking requests via email. If people want to send something to me, I just can't guarantee whether or not I will actually read it. I feel like the Hades audio kind of has some M sub vibes a little bit. He's, he's kind of topping from the bottom, but, but you know, it's, it's a thing with him. You got to listen to the audio to check it out. The audio, the Hades, uh, it's called the Please, it's called Please Hades. It's available on Quinn and my Patreon, which you can reach by going to my profile and clicking through the links. The links are safe, by the way. How did I get started doing this? Um, I did a little bit of voiceover work when I was in my early 20s. And then... Uh, oh, hold on. I have to fix... TikTok now has an hour... At an hour live, you have to do this little thing to verify that you're still awake and actually responding to the camera which I feel like they could just do that via AI or something. Um, but yeah, I have to, I have to move the thing anyway. What was I talking about? Oh yeah. Um, I did a little bit of voice acting in my early twenties and then, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. 12 years of being in a career that I, only marginally enjoyed. Um, and so I was very unhappy. It was the pandemic and, and I then got on Reddit and found gone wild audio and I found a bunch of hobbyists doing audio work and, and I was like, Oh my God, I could do this. And that's, that's where it all got started. This was maybe a month before black Friday. So I waited until black Friday and got myself a bunch of really great equipment on on a major budget and went from there. I would say from the time I launched my TikTok and Patreon to the time when I was finally feeling confident to be able to do this full time. It took me about a year. Yeah, the comments on Quinn podcast was fun. I enjoyed doing that one.
Any future interviews with Quinn? Probably not. I mean, unless Quinn is going to do some kind of major, like, Quinn creator. I mean, Quinn should really just do, like, a a convention at this point. Get all their creators down there and have, you know, have a have a big whatever thing. I would do that. Um, bring all their creators down. Although, you know... I don't know what that, I, 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 yeah, I don't know how that would end up going. I feel like if they did do something like that, we would have to have, <laughs> have to have a lot of security around. Yeah, the, the part of the problem is that most creators um, on Quinn, most creators in general in this line of work, prefer to remain relatively anonymous in their personal lives. Like, they don't show their face. They don't. They don't talk about their real name. You know, it's it's a whole thing. So, it would basically be me and uh, Sarah Gibson and raw vintage all just having a convention for ourselves maybe uh zach cowman too <laughs> oh oh yeah and, and nick grizz of course Yeah, I mean, I think that was one of the ways in which I was able to break out of the the herd in this in this genre was because I was just willing to show my face. I kind of caught to a point where I was just like, I'm all in on this. There's there there's there's really no turning back for me. Um, I probably could have gotten there without showing my face, but. I think there's more like my, it, for me, it became more about the level of commitment I had to my creativity. Um, cause if I wasn't willing to do that, I wouldn't have made it. Uh, I had to basically shut the door and, um, and, and throw away the key <laughs> cause otherwise I wouldn't get, have given it my all. No. No, I don't regret this at all. I I love this. Um, I think there are many ways in which my life has gone in gone in directions that I just did not anticipate, and this is one of them. And I'm just I'm just enjoying being here for as long as this is uh, as long as this is going on. Brene Brown talks about uh, getting in the arena, and that's that's sort of what I'm trying to do. I'm just I'm just here, just trying to do my thing. I have not ever actually been approached or recognized in a public place yet, and you know, I mean, I'm I will be surprised if I ever am. I mean, the world's a big place and, you know, I mean, I have a lot of listeners, but I, I don't know that I have that many. We'll see. I still don't know if I could actually fill up a, like a, a theater <laughs> If I were to just say, okay, this location, this date, you know, Orcus Live, I don't think I could, I don't, I don't think I would be able to sell it out. Uh, that, this is my, this is my current theory. <laughs> 
I just told somebody today that I wrote that I sometimes narrate romance novels and and they were like, oh, do they do you do the cover too? Do they make you sit on a horse with with your shirt off? <laughs> like, okay, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I I mean, it's really interesting how the cultural how the culture shifts, and you can really watch the the way that that. Uh, masculinity, the views of masculinity have shifted based on what the the male archetypes are in the books in, that appear in romance books. Oh, yeah. I don't uh, <laughs> male mafia or mafia romance covers. I don't know. I can't I can't do a I can't do a blue steel. Well, maybe I can. I haven't tried. I would do I would do a romance movie where all I had to do was just grunt and growl the whole time. <laughs> I'm usually live about this time every week on Tuesdays. Uh, you know, roughly between noon and three. PM Pacific Standard Time every Tuesday. Does it get easier to slip into your more saucy persona? You definitely give off different vibes. Yes. I would say it's easy to slip into different vibes because there there I've been I've slipped into other more spicy vibes on TikTok live enough times to know where the edge is the the edge is before I get banned uh like you know a 7 day ban or something um so you know I ride that edge every once in a while I like you riding your edge Please edge. Shh. Well, everybody, uh, I want to thank all of you for hanging out with me for a little while. I will be posting the replay of this live on the Patreon, if you're interested, uh, in the next day or so. Thank you, everybody. I very much love this. It's one of my favorite things to do every week. I'll be back next week. All right. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day.